Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Tech Tips, and this is another uh, little topic I want to deal with. And again, it comes from a comment. One of you fellows asked something, I don't know who it was, I'm sorry, uh, but somebody anyway asked, how much lift do I need? My dive store is trying to sell me a 50 pound uh, lift uh, BC, and uh, I, I weigh 127 pounds. Anyway, so it's a good question. Good question. How much lift? Because BCs range in lift from, gosh, 15 pounds to 75 is not uncommon. 75 pounds of lift, that's, that's well, it wouldn't be enough for Kevin, but it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just discuss it for a moment. Now, what you actually do, what you actually choose to wear, should be done in conjunction with your instructor and your dive store. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, and I think I'm right when I say that the vast majority of people in the industry will do right by the divers. They will, they will give the proper advice. But... Let's deal with a couple of things to think about, okay? This is a pretty standard BC. It doesn't get any simpler than this. The tank goes in the back, and you get out, you go in the front, and you do up the cummerbund. It's got a bit of pockets. This is about as close to standard as you can get. Over here, of course, is your is your power inflate valve, your PIV. has a quick dump on the top, and you squeeze for air, and you blow up the body. It, this is a standard BC. 18 pounds of lift. 18 pounds is not a very not a whole lot you know i i would say my my uh, my experience which is pretty good i would say that 25 to 35 pounds is what the vast majority of divers somewhere in that size why is this one so low well because it's an extra extra small yeah so uh, if you're a very small person this this would be for a a, a very light lady a small lady or or maybe for a a a, a, a preteen diver you know, 12, 13, 14 year old, slim boy or girl uh, in, in that area. <clears throat> and and uh, 18 pounds might be quite enough. Now, there's other factors to consider. Is this diving in cold water and maybe in fresh cold water where the diver might be wearing a full quarter inch wetsuit? Because that gives a great deal of buoyancy. How much weight do they need to overcome the buoyancy of the wetsuit? Because that makes a difference as well. But uh, generally speaking, very often, the size of the BC that the diver is, is, is going to wear, the proper size of BC, because BCs have to be sized to the diver, you understand that? The, the size of the BC that fits the diver properly will, in many cases, decide the amount of lift. In this case, extra, extra small, 18 pounds of lift. Makes sense. Now, keep in mind a couple of things. First of all, a diver is supposed to be neutral at the surface. Now, if you check back in your, in your, and, and, you know, this is a discussion point. There's no hard and fast rule. But if you look back in your basic training manual, the uh, first thing you need to do is to check on what neutral means. Okay? Some divers think that neutral means if you let all the air to the BC, you start to sink. Uh, other divers think neutral means that you're floating on the surface. No. Uh, the proper definition by dive, by dive training standards, neutral means that if all the airs are your BC and you're vertical in the water, you're floating about your eyes. Just like that. If you take a breath of air, your eyes will come out of the water, you go up a little bit. If you let the air out, you'll sink a little bit. But generally speaking, you're floating about this area here, but just your, just this part of your head sticking out. Careful of the sun. Anyway. So that's what notes you mean. Now, if you have a full wetsuit on and you're right in the amount of weights, forget the BC and the tank and everything else for just a moment, you should be neutral. Now, when you put a tank on and the buoyancy compensator, put that on, then that neutral, that neutral trim ought not to change very much. Let all the air to the BC, you should still be close to neutral. Okay? So what's the BC for? Well, the BC, as you all know, is to allow you to adjust your buoyancy underwater because as you descend, your buoyancy changes, particularly if you're diving in cold water with a quarter-inch wetsuit. If you are neutral to the surface, you go to 30 feet, no, no, you're neutral anymore. You're negative. That's right, because now your wetsuit, in theory, has been compressed to one half. It's now an eighth-inch wetsuit. That's not actually what happens because the rubber bubbles present some resistance to good old Boyle's law. But the point is that you've lost a lot of that buoyancy. So you're at 30 feet, now you've lost a lot of the buoyancy of the wetsuit. You're no longer neutral, you're negative. Where's the bottom? Because that's where you're going. And that's what the BC is for. As you're descending, you don't wait till you're 30 feet necessarily, you put a bit of air in, like that. You hear that? That's your air going in, yeah. <laughs> And you put a bit of air in so that when you arrive at 30 feet, 
assuming that's a dive depth that you are happy with, or you're going to be at, when you arrive at 30 feet, you're still neutral. Now, when you arrive at 30 feet and you're neutral, the definition of neutral has changed. You're no longer floating at your eyebrows. No, no. Neutral at 30 feet, meaning underwater, any depth, means that you're neither rising nor are you sinking. You should, if you stay perfectly still, let go and just hang there, you should hang there. Now again, if you're close, if you're very close to him, if you take a big breath, you'll start to rise very slightly. Out of that, you'll sink, sink very slowly. Take a normal breath of air. You should stare. That's neutral. Okay, how much lift do you need? Well, if you're neutral at 30 feet and you fill this BC full of air, it has 18, let's call it 20, make it easier to say. You have 20 pounds of buoyancy. You're being pulled upwards by a force of 20 pounds. That's a lot. You're going to go up very quickly. And one of the difficulties is, particularly if the BC has too much lift, if it has too much lift, it can happen, okay? As you start to ascend, you want to let air out of the buoyancy compensator because you have too much. You let some, you hear that? That's air going up. A little bit of air out as you're going up so that you don't start to rush towards the surface. Well, why would you rush towards the surface? Well, you see, not only is your wetsuit expanding and making you more buoyant, but the air and the buoyancy compensator that you put in to stay neutral at 30 feet, it's also expanding. And guess what? It expands according to Boyle's law. So if you put half a BC of air in there, between 30 feet and the surface, it doubles. Now the BC is jammed full. You're going to rock, rock it out of the water like a Poseidon rocket. Absolutely. If you don't want that, you better hope the dive boat's not above you. So as you ascend, you slowly let the air out. And you watch where you are. Hopefully there's, a, hopefully there's a descent line. You can watch the line hang on to it. Or another diver. Or you're very, very good at watching your depth gauge. You can watch it. You should go up. And you can control it. Now, why would you not want a lot of, lot of buoyancy? Some dive stars and some divers, dive buddies, and so on, say, well, get a BC with lots of air, buoyancy that way if you're underwater, and it's too heavy, you can put some in it, you got lots. Well, you can begin to understand the problem when you understand what I said here. Let's assume you're back at 30 feet, and you have put some air into your 60-pound lift buoyancy compensator. Now you start to rise towards the surface. Now you don't let air out. I, because if that buoyancy compensator gets away from you, starts to expand too quickly, you can't dump air fast enough. It won't come out of that hole fast enough to overcome the expansion of a 60-pound buoyancy compensator. So it's very careful that you have the right amount of lift. Now, the right amount of lift will vary for other reasons as well. It may vary depending on the gear that you're wearing. It may vary depending on the dive that you're doing as well. We're going to go over and look at a, a big BC. Let's go and look at a big BC, okay? So here we are back with a uh, with a high lift BC. This is this is now uh, this has changed. First of all, this is a completely different style of BC. This is a wing style BC, or some people call it the donut. I don't like people change names. You got a good name for something you've been used for years, wing BC, and they change it and want to call it donut. I understand it looks like a donut. That's not the point. Anyway, this is a different style of BC. This buoyancy compensator, all of the lift is at the back like this. It has it normally has a heavy plate in there. This particular case, it has two tanks on it, uh, almost two tanks. They weigh about three pounds, but that's not the point. So this is a uh, this is a, a BC with a very very high lift, and, and this particular high lift style would be used by a more technical diver. A diver who is probably getting into cave diving or, or, uh, or uh, penetration wreck diving and learning more technical types of diving. So it's extremely high lift. And he has two tanks on here as well in this particular model. So maybe some of the high lift is justified. My point to all of this is it's still a BC. Same thing. It has a bladder. You put air into it. Same, uh, same power inflator. Same dump. Everything else. It's exactly the same basic function as the smaller BC we saw over there, 60 pounds of lift. And as I said earlier, there may well be justification for a diver to have 60 pounds of lift on his BC. He will have to decide that based on his diving experience, the dive store uh, help, and his instructor who, who is probably accompanying him on these more extreme dives. All of those decisions, keeping in mind, as we discussed earlier, some of the issues. 60 pounds of lift. This buoyancy compensator is inflated to any depth. He's going to be very, very, very careful on his ascent. From 30 feet up, incredibly careful. From 30 feet 
to the surface, this PC will double in size. Very, very careful. So, point is, be very careful. Don't buy a great big high lift BC because it sounds cool. Or somebody said, oh, you need a lot of lift because you're a heavy guy. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with it. Okay? Common sense and good advice from your dive store and your instructor. And you decide. Some of these ideas might help you to make that decision. I hope there's something in there for you. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Talk to you soon.